Hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar on using Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Container Instances. My name is Tara Van Cleve and I'm a Marketing Event Manager for the Developer Initiative here at Oracle. Today we're excited to dive into the benefits of container instances, the use cases, and demonstrate how you can use them. If you do not currently have an Oracle Cloud account, we've got a special promotion with extra credit so that you can try out OCI services and follow along with the demo today. To access the promo, please sign up using the same email you registered with for the event. We'll also be recording the session and the link to the recording will be sent to you via email in the next couple of days. If you have any questions during the webinar, we've set up a channel in our developer public Slack called Webinar Container Instances that you can access at the QR code or at bit.ly slash odevrel underscore Slack. Once you're in, you'll land in the general channel and from there you can search for the webinar channel. We'll also be checking the Zoom chat and Zoom Q&A areas throughout the webinar and we'll open up for live Q&A after the demo. Today's webinar will be presented by Greg Verstraten, Senior Principal Product Manager, Rishikesh Paul, Principal Product Manager, and Chiping Huang, Senior Principal Technical Marketing Engineer. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Greg. Thank you, Tara. Okay. Um, all right. So this session is about uh, is about container um, OCI container instances, a new resource to uh, to execute containers. So containers are rapidly being uh, adopted by organizations uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, according to Gartner, more than seventy five percent of enterprise will use containers in production by uh, by twenty twenty four. We use to uh, to deploy. Uh, um, um, our workloads on uh, on virtual machines, but it was creating some uh, some uh, some problems. Um, it was uh, it was hard to uh, to get a consistent uh, uh, runtime to execute the, the workloads. Something tweaked and uh, and nothing could uh, would uh, would work. Uh, it was hard to uh, to uh, separate the workloads uh, um, clearly from uh, running on the same uh, the same uh, the same machines. So containers came and uh, it solved all those uh, those uh, those problems. Um, they are portable. Uh, we build container images and we are able to run uh, in different run them in different cloud or on premises exactly the, the same uh, the same uh, the same way. Um, we been with containers. We benefit from uh, from a deployment consistency. So we know that uh, that uh, that image, when it's uh, being built, is going to run uh, always the same uh, the same uh, the same way. Um, so uh, so that's uh, that's uh, that's big uh, big benefit um, when we want to uh, when we want to uh, to package our application and make sure that it's going to run with the right uh, the right libraries. Um, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, the prerequisite of the operating system. We know that they have everything they need to, uh, to run. And finally, it helps with uh, the build automation. We're able to, uh, to configure the application to make it go through uh, a CI CD, a DevOps uh, pipeline, pipeline. And, uh, and the result is a container image that we can, uh, that we can deploy, uh, deploy uh, uh, securely and, uh, and we know that the application is gonna run. And Kubernetes has become the standard for, uh, for running, uh, operate, uh, running those, uh, those uh, containers and, uh, and operating them. Um, but Kubernetes is, uh, is complex uh, and uh, our customers asked for, uh, for alternatives way, alternative way to, um, to execute um, their containers. Um, they, want, uh, they want Kubernetes for some, uh, some of the use cases, for some of the teams, but some other teams need something more, uh, more simple. They don't have the time to, uh, to invest any skills on Kubernetes. Our group is responsible for, uh, for um, the experience of running containers in, uh, in OCI. So we have, uh, we have several uh, services uh, to, uh, to, provide, uh, to provide the best experience to run, uh, to run containers. In some uh, in in OCI, uh, you might want some more more control and uh, and um, you know own the whole uh, software stack on top of uh, of uh, of the, the the compute resources. 
and execute your 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 containers, and that's uh, and that's good. But on the other hand, some teams want uh, more agility. They don't want to uh, to deal with them um, with the operating system, the upgrades. They just want to uh, produce on uh, the code and uh, and have it executed. Um, so we have a panel of services to address um, to to that fits on that uh, on that spectrum, and uh, and so we have Kubernetes here. Um, as I said, some customers find Kubernetes the best uh, the best way to execute their container containers at uh, at scale, but some other some others would uh, would like um, more uh, more simplicity and just have access to a service, give the container image, and it runs. And that's uh, that is addressed with container instances, in which we're going to uh, to deep, deep dive today. Many customers use uh, use our container services in uh, in uh, in OCI, um, and uh, and uh, thanks to them, we get we understand their use case and uh, and new requirements to make uh, to 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 improve uh, to improve our service. So now, Rishikesh, I let you uh, I let you. Um, uh, present and deep dive into container instance. Thanks, Greg. Um, Tara, while I share my screen, can we bring up our first poll, please? Great. So around 75% people think that it's not expensive to run containers using serverless services, which is great because you already know the benefits of OCI container instances. So let me go ahead and give you an overview of um, OCI container instances, and then we'll go through some of the key features. And then we'll talk about um, some of the use cases for which you can leverage um, container instances. So OCI Container Instances, as Greg said, is a new uh, compute service that we have recently uh, released uh, to provide a simple, quick, and secure way to run containers in the cloud without managing any infrastructure. Um, it provides serverless compute uh, that is ma fully managed and hardened by OCI, and it is specifically optimized for running container workloads. Since it is optimized for running container workloads, you can launch your containerized applications with faster startup compared to provisioning VMs and running containers um, by managing those VMs. A key differentiator of OCI container instances is the flexibility that you get in terms of uh, allocating resources. So we don't enforce any resource constraints at the container instances level. Um, you can allocate all the CPU and memory that's provided by the underlying uh, OCI compute shape. Uh, for example, if you select E3 or E4 flex shape, um, you can allocate up to 128 vCPU and one TB of memory per container instance, which is significantly higher than what other serverless container offerings offer today in the market. And uh, the biggest advantage of using OCI container instances is there are no additional charges for using the serverless experience of container instances. Um, you only pay for the CPU and memory resources that are allocated to a container instance at the same price as the regular OCI compute. Um, so there are no additional charges there. And um, that's exactly why it's not more expensive if you want to use container instances to run your containers. In fact, it's uh, more cost effective for you since you don't have to spend time and resources in provisioning and managing VMs or servers for running your containers. Uh, now, let me talk about some of the key features that we have uh, added as we released um, OCI container instances. And um, in a few minutes, Greg will also talk about um, some of the features that we are working on. Um, so in terms of um, key features, um, as I mentioned, um, we provide flexibility in terms of 
a resource allocation for container instances. So it is suitable for running a range of workloads, right from lightweight container workloads to the most uh, demanding uh, resource demanding workloads. As you are launching container instances, you can select your preferred compute shape and get flexibility to, to allocate all the CPU and memory that's provided by the underlying compute shape. Uh, we also provide 15 GB of ephemeral storage uh, with every container instance. It's included by default, um, so there are no additional charges for this ephemeral storage as well. Uh, it is quite simple to launch container instances. Launching a container instance is as simple as executing a single command or making an API call. So you can easily and quickly launch container instances using OCI console or CLI or API or Terraform. Uh, depending upon the type of application that you are running, you may want to run a single container application or you may have a multi-container application where you have main application container that's supported by other containers, um, be it having a sidecar pattern or full stack application. Um, so if you want to run such multi-container applications, uh, you can launch one or more containers as you are creating a container instance. Um, if you are running more than one containers, uh, all the containers on that particular container instance will be co-located and they will share underlying networking space and um, resources. Um, containers running on the same container instance uh, can communicate over each other over localhost or using loopback interface, which allows you to implement sidecar pattern. Um, Container instances is um, also uh, integrated with OCI container registry. So you get seamless experience for pulling container images and launching them as containers. Uh, in addition to that, we support any open container initiative compliant container registry. So if you want to use an external registry and pull container images from that, um, that is also possible. Apart from that, uh, if you want more control over the container launch configuration, we provide optional settings. Um, so you can use options such as um, graceful shutdown, uh, container restart policy. Um, you can define environment variables, uh, startup options um, such as entry point arguments, uh, as well as you can define um, uh, or configure a resource throttling at a container level to ensure that uh, one particular container is not hogging all the resources. So you get control over the launch configuration using these advanced configuration options um, and launch containers the way you want. Uh, in terms of security, networking, and observability, uh, container instances is seamlessly integrated with um, OCI platform capabilities. So you have seamless experience in terms of security, networking, and observability. One of the major benefits of using container instances is the improved security that you get because of the strong workload isolation. Uh, with container instances, you get strong workload isolation, same as the virtual machines. Every container instance is isolated at the hypervisor level from other container instances. So there is no sharing of underlying OS kernel uh, or uh, resources across um, container instances. And this improves security significantly. Even if a container escapes uh, its boundary, it will only get access to the container instance and it won't impact other container instances that you are running. Um, it is seamlessly integrated with virtual cloud network, um, which allows you to secure incoming and outgoing communication for your application using the virtual cloud network features. Optionally, you can also assign a public IP address to your container instance if you want to access your application over a public IP. Um, it, then it's also integrated with identity and access management capabilities of OCI, which allows you to configure fine-grained access control IAM policies uh, for accessing other OCI services and resources 
uh, from your applications that are running in container instances. And of course, we provide built-in metrics and logging capabilities um, so that you have built-in uh, observability as well as you are deploying your applications. Um, now, with that uh, overview of uh, container instances and some of the key features, let's talk about the use cases for which container instances are suitable. Um, so OCI container instances is, is the best fit for containerized applications that do not require advanced container orchestration capabilities provided by Kubernetes. Um, since containers are ephemeral by nature, and container instances are specifically designed for running containers. Um, they are best fit for executing ephemeral workloads, um, particularly executing uh, tasks uh, as part of your CI CD pipelines or executing data or media processing jobs as part of your data processing workflows or automating uh, tasks for your cloud operations. These type of ephemeral use cases, um, you can uh, execute using um, container instances. It is also suitable for um, quickly spinning up and tearing down development and test environments um, for your containerized applications. Uh, container instances can also be used for hosting isolated APIs and web applications, and you can expose them uh, over, over public IP address or leveraging the load balancer. Um, container instances are a good fit for uh, legacy standalone applications that are typically not designed for the modern cloud native platforms like Kubernetes. So until you transform these applications into modern applications, you can containerize those applications and run them in the cloud using OCI container instances. Since you have flexibility to allocate uh, as much CPU and memory required for your applications, you can leverage that for running your uh, standalone legacy applications. Uh, if you are running any container workloads directly on servers or virtual machines, um, you can definitely leverage container instances and move those workloads to container instances so that you don't have to manage any infrastructure for running those uh, workloads. Uh, of course, for use cases where you want to leverage Kubernetes, we provide a managed Kubernetes service called OCI Container Engine for Kubernetes popularly known as OK. Um, you can leverage that if you are um, using Kubernetes. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it to uh, Chip to talk about, uh, sorry, to demonstrate the capabilities of OCI container instances. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Rishi. So for today's demo, I'm going to deploy a containerized application well, for, without first establishing a server or installing a container runtime. Uh, so for our application, we're using WordPress, a well-known tool to deploy websites. And the great thing about WordPress is it's free to use, and there's already an official containerized image that's downloadable from Docker Hub. So one of the prerequisites that using WordPress is to be able to access the database. And for that, today we'll be using MySQL, uh, MySQL database service, a fully managed MySQL database. And because we do want our website to be accessible to the internet, we'll be putting a public subnet along with the public IP address. So I'm just going to start it then, but just so you hear, we do have the OCI console and container instances located under the developer services. And for what we're gonna do here, well, first of all, we do need to create a brand new container instance. So we'll go click, click on that. And for name, for simplicity's sake, we'll just call it demo three here. So the first part of configuration is really about the underlying infrastructure of container instances. So for example, in this case, we can, um, we can put the placement of the container instance within available, uh, within availability domain. So for example, if you have to use multiple container instances for your application, you may want to consider putting a different available, available domain in order to get some redundancy. So as Rishi Cash mentioned earlier, we do have currently have two different shapes you can select for container instances, E4 and E3. There's going to be a more uh, shape coming later on, later on with uh, as uh, considering to become a mature. And for each of these, we can allocate 64 CPUs and up to one terabyte of memory. But because we don't need a lot of resources, we'll just use two and 16. And from networking perspective, well, we're just going to shoot. We're just going to we're just going to choose our container instance demo of VCN. And because we do want it accessible from the internet, we'll put it in the public set of that. 
and we will assign it a, a, a public IP address here. So the second part is really where the meat of the Kater Instant Configure comes. First of all, we get to select the Kater image you want to use, and we'll also be able to configure it. One thing you'll notice here with Container 1, and that's Greg and Rishi talking about, you can have multiple containers within container instances. They all share the same IP address and all the same underlying resources. And as uh, Rishi mentioned, it's really more for specific use cases. Typically, you would have one main application container, and you will have subsequent containers to support it. So for example, if you need to export logging from this application, you might consider using a secondary container for this particular functionality. So here is where we're going to actually select the image we want to use. By default, it is the OCI registry, but we can't access any external registry as long as we have IP connected to it. So the default is Starter Hub, but if, you, but if there are any other registries you connect to, it's very simple. You just click here and just put the IP address of that. But in our case, because we're looking, we'll just leave that as default. So image we'll be using is WordPress. And from a tagging perspective, since we do want the latest image, we'll just put latest here. Okay. So this is where we select the image. And the next part is really about the environment variable. So in most cases, container image, this is where you can be a you can, can add configuration images. So because we just need a database, this is where we'll be able to enter that information. And if you want more information about uh, configure container image, you can simply go to documentation. So here, I'm just going to enter the information required. First of all, we do need to the location of the database host. And if we need if we need to add another container, we can simply do it here. But in our perspective, we, but for today's demo, we don't need a secondary container. We just need the main applet container. Here we kind of go over the configuration, make sure exactly what we want, and that's it. We're creating a, we're creating a container instance. So this typically takes about a minute or so. Most of the time, will will actually less than a minute. Most of the time, is actually be downloading the container image itself. But for the interest of time, I actually just show you, I'll just go to one of the ones that previously created. So when actually when the computer instance finally finished, it will provide you with a public IP address. And once you have that, you simply put it, you simply put it in and look, your block is your block is here ready, ready to go. Your actually your what your uh, WordPress site is ready to go. And this is all done without without having to extend a virtual machine or deploy a container runtime. But more importantly, going forward, there is no server for me to manage. Um, yeah, and this is a demo. You see it, it's pretty quick to deploy an application using container instances. So with that, I'll turn it over to Greg. Okay, so um, we talked about uh, container instances. We, um, we showed, uh, we demoed it. Um, and container instances came out uh, came out last uh, last month, and uh, and so for uh, for for the release we wanted to um to nail the basic right execute uh, execute uh, containers um, uh, securely with uh, strong isolations uh, for for each one of the container instances. Um, we support. Um, we made the choice to support AMD E three and E four uh, uh, shapes. Um, um, that provide a very, uh, very good, uh, good scalability, um, and uh, and along with um, with um, the cont each container instances, we you have ephemeral storage, and uh, when we provide uh, fifteen gig of uh, of ephemeral storage, uh, we have a, a pretty uh, a pretty good uh, startup uh, startup time um, uh, compared to uh, to uh, to VM. Um, and um, and uh, so we provide 
monitoring metrics so you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh, monitor your your containers uh, and uh, and access uh, access their logs so all all this we consider the basic to run uh, to run containers in uh, in production but we want to uh, we have a rich roadmap to uh, to get uh, to get further um, first, we uh, we think that uh, you need uh, more shapes, um, uh, support for more shapes. For example, um, you go, you're going to need Intel um, uh, because you know your containers um, run better on Intel. Um, you have uh, you have some workloads that run better on on AMD. That's uh, that's delivered, but Intel is also uh, is also a good uh, a good choice. Um, you might want to uh, to save uh, to save um, your cost by using ARM processors. Uh, so we we'll, uh, we will deliver this. And you have uh, you might have some uh, some workloads that require a GPU um, for uh, for media processing, for example, or for uh, for machine uh, machine learning. Uh, so this is uh, also a type of shape that we want to uh, that we want to support. As I said, currently, uh, container instances only have ephemeral storage, um, so they're currently not uh, not ideal to run uh, to run a database or a stateful uh, stateful application. I mean, with a state that is on uh, on volumes along with the container. So uh, we'll deliver uh, support for persistent uh, persistent volume. You will be able to uh, to configure um, a block uh, block volume that you will attach to uh, to your container instance. So any data that you write on that uh, on that volume would uh, would persist um, uh, after after reboots or after deletion and recreation of uh, of, uh, of your container uh, container. Um, we want to support the same capability that VM have uh, with uh, with CPU bursting. Um, you know, you are you configure a certain amount of uh, CPU for for your uh, for your uh, for your workload, and you want to uh, you want to allow it to uh, to get a little bit more uh, from uh, from time to time. <clears throat> we want to uh, to deliver preemptible, same on the same theme as uh, as um, saving uh, saving uh, saving costs. Um, you, uh, we want to support this type of uh, of CPU, um, and for some workload, um, we know that fifteen gig of ephemeral storage is not enough. Um, that uh, that you might need uh, need more, and uh, and so this is something that we want to uh, to deliver as well. We want to deliver even faster launch uh, launch time. Um, um, so uh, so you know you currently we average around 40, uh, 40 seconds um, of a startup time for you know um, relatively relatively uh, like a two hundred uh, megabyte uh, uh, image. Um, we want to uh, to bring uh, bring that down even uh, even further. We want to make it easy uh, for uh, for. Uh, when you use the Docker CLI or the Podman CLI uh, to directly integrate uh, with uh, with container instances, so like for example, I do a Docker run of my uh, of my image, I uh, would have uh, the parameters or like the profile to directly execute that container on container instances instead of uh, my laptop. Um, we want to uh, to uh, to make it uh, uh, even more secure um, on the secret and the encryption side. So, for example, um, we want uh, the we want to be able to configure a container instance that is uh, that can access secrets in uh, in OCI uh, OCI Vault, and those secrets would be mounted uh, on the container instance, so the containers can uh, can retrieve the secret and authenticate to um, to a database, for example. Um, we want to uh, when we will we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we have ephemeral storage. Uh, we have uh, the we will have persistent volume. We want to uh, to have uh, to configure a key so the encryption you can you, you can encrypt those volumes using your own key. Um, and finally, um, we want uh, and we we are we're committed to deliver this uh, very uh, very soon. Uh, we want the logs. Uh, of the container in instance um, of your application to go automatically in OCI log, so uh, it would uh, it would persist there. So you delete your container instance, you can always go get uh, get to OCI logging and uh, and look what uh, what uh, what were the logs, what happened during the execution of uh, of the container. So. Um, 
container instance container instances is uh, the most uh, the most simple uh, simple and qu quick and secure way to run containers right without having to manage any uh, any servers but as i said at the beginning um K kubernetes is the de facto platform now for uh, for running containers at uh, at scale um it's uh, it's not something that we're trying to replace with uh, with container instances. Uh, we continue to invest on uh, on uh, on Kubernetes because we know that uh, that our customers have use cases for both um, container instances for the teams um, for the teams that don't have the Kubernetes skills, or for for some application that we want to keep uh, keep uh, without the complexity of Kubernetes. Container instances is made for that. Um, but Kubernetes uh, for uh, for 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 managing Kubernetes for managing application workloads at uh, at uh, at scale and for the teams that know how to uh, to operate it, uh, we want to uh, continue and uh, and improve the experience of using Kubernetes in uh, in OCI. So um, soon we'll uh, we'll provide a new uh, a new type of nodes for for Kubernetes clusters. Currently, you have the managed nodes, and uh, those are compute instances for which we provide an API to uh, to manage the lifecycle of those nodes. Um, and uh, it's your responsibility to size them, uh, and we provide the auto scaler to uh, to increase the capacity of uh, to to increase the the, the 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 number of nodes in uh, in uh, in your cluster to uh, accommodate uh, the peak of uh, of your workload or like grow grow the cluster as uh, as uh, as you put more workloads in it um but our customers said you know it's a lot of uh, it's a lot to uh, to manage um not only it's the kubernetes skills that we have to get and where we we that's something that we want to own but all the infrastructure and infrastructure management part um we would like uh, you to uh, to provide more simplification and uh, and so this is, uh, and so ultimately, it would be consuming Kubernetes without having to manage the infrastructure structure. So uh, we call it serverless Kubernetes. Um, and to deliver a serverless Kubernetes uh, um, experience, um, we'll support a new type of nodes, and that's uh, virtual uh, virtual nodes. It's not available now. Um, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, coming uh, coming very soon. So with virtual uh, virtual nodes, uh, we deliver a serverless Kubernetes experience. You don't have to uh, to uh, to manage your the nodes in uh, in your in your cluster. You don't have to uh, to cycle uh, upgrade uh, upgrade uh, to to do an upgrade. You don't have to cycle uh, cycle them, and uh, and uh, scaling uh, scaling the number of uh, of nodes in uh, in your cluster is done automatically. So it simplifies the the, oper the, the, the the Kubernetes operation related to the in, uh, to the infrastructure, but you keep the flexibility to uh, to support your application requirements. For example, um, 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 uh, splitting your uh, your replicas of your application across availability domains or for uh, for domains for uh, for HA. Uh, you keep uh, you keep this. You able to uh, to scale vertically the, the the pods in your Kubernetes uh, cluster to uh, to um, to, uh, to many uh, many uh, uh, core or, or VCP. And finally, it's a different way to um, to optimize your costs because um, because with um, normal I mean normal uh, managed nodes, a cluster with managed nodes, you pay for the nodes, right? You have three nodes of that size. That's exactly what you pay for. Uh, with virtual uh, with virtual nodes, you pay per pod. A pod uses one uh, one CPU, two gig of memory. You pay exactly for that one CPU uh, uh, for for gig of, uh, of memory. So what did what did we cover today? Um, we talked about container instances, um, this new uh, resource in uh, in uh, in OCI that is made specifically to run uh, to run containers without having to manage any servers, any uh, any infrastructure. Um, it is made so to uh, to save you from uh, from acquiring or uh, acquiring uh, Kubernetes skills or uh, or um, you know managing Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes in uh, in uh, in production. 
it is uh, it is simple. Uh, it is uh, it's your containers start uh, quickly, and uh, and they, they run securely. And at the end, I open towards Kubernetes, uh, and we are continue we continue to uh, to uh, to improve the Kubernetes experience in uh, in OCI. We currently support managed nodes, um, which are compute, uh, compute instances, um, and it comes with some responsibility on your side to size uh, size them and uh, and uh, and cycle them to uh, to upgrade uh, to upgrade uh, uh, Kubernetes on those uh, on those nodes. But you have full control of uh, over those uh, those nodes. And for customers, we want we want some more serverless approach to managing the infrastructure of their Kubernetes clusters. We will uh, we will deliver uh, virtual nodes uh, uh, soon, and with this, um, they still have the full uh, uh, Kubernetes orchestration to manage their their workloads. Uh, but we uh, virtual nodes uh, provide an abstraction uh, to regular Kubernetes nodes. They, it eliminates the operational overhead to manage, uh, scale, and upgrade uh, their Kubernetes uh, their nodes infrastructure. So uh, on this slide we put uh, we put several uh, several uh, uh, links um, um, like to learn more about container instances, uh, some blogs uh, um, that we um, that we uh, that we wrote. Um, there's a tutorial um, that Chip uh, made. Um, so um, we uh, we hope uh, we hope you will find all the information uh, that you need about container instances. We hope that you're going to try it uh, and uh, and adopt it uh, for uh, for the use case that you are that you need. And if you want uh, any uh, additional information, feel free to uh, to reach out to us. Thank you all so much again for joining us, and we hope to see you again next time.